Hello there. Hope you are doing well. Welcome to today's video. In this video, we'll look into the Style Components library, one of the top CSS and JS frameworks out there. We will learn how the library solves the problem of styling React components in the most optimal way. Let's get started. This video has been split into these separate parts. Please feel free to skip around to the parts you are interested in by using the links in the description. First, let us talk a little bit about how we style our web pages. Back in the days of HTML, it was quite straightforward. You built a page using HTML, styled it using a CSS file, and added interactions to it using a JavaScript file, if required. And you were set. Just three files. That got complicated as the web progressed. Now, as SPAs or single page applications took over the web, things changed. Take React for instance. There are no distinctions on a file basis as everything can be written in a single JSX, aka JavaScript extension file, which looks something like this. In this piece of code, we see that some business logic has been written in a function in the file, while it also returns an h1 like element in this HTML like syntax. So the lines have clearly blurred right now. But what about styling? How does styling a React element work? Well, there are quite a few ways to do that. The first one of them is using good old external CSS files. Traditional CSS files can be imported into the React component and just like we assign class to an HTML element, we can assign a class name to a React element as class is a reserved keyword. Once a class is assigned, it comes into effect on the element just like traditional CSS would. But we know the pitfalls of CSS, don't we? the bulky files, the mixing up of scopes which lead to some serious scaling issues as the side of the code base grows. Yes, frameworks like SAS help here to some degree, but they come along with a problem set of their own. The second approach is what we call inline CSS. In this approach, there is no separate CSS file, but the CSS is defined in the form of JavaScript objects in the same file and then those objects are passed as a style prop to the component. While working with large projects, this approach does not make too much sense too. It's just that you are storing the entire CSS in the form of JavaScript objects, and it doesn't take long to figure out what a nightmare it is going to be. Besides, check the camel casing on the background image style which is different from CSS, and another extra thing you need to be mindful of. Also. No support for pseudo selectors. Huh. Enter styled components. The library that is kind of trying to solve the problems which we discussed just now and a whole lot of others. It uses the tag template literal syntax to allow us to write actual CSS into our components. It aims to remove the mapping between component and styles, enabling us to use component as a low level styling construct. That sounds a bit complex. Let's see what all that means. Let us construct our first styled component to understand the concept in detail. Here is some traditionally styled React code. And this is the snippet from the CSS file which styles the component. In the styled way of doing things, this is how the component would look like. We import the styled keyword from the library and create this styled div of sorts. What we get from that is this full-fledged React component with the applied styles on a div. And this is how the component can be reused thereafter, just like a normal React component. That looks easy, right? Let us see that code in action by building our first styled component. Feel free to follow along or check out the complete code in the GitHub repo linked attached in the description. Let us create a new React project using the command npx create react app followed by the project name. Once that is done, let us cd into the newly created folder and run npm start to launch the app. And there you go, the default home screen. Next, let us install the styled components library using the save flag. Once that completes, let's open app.js and import styled from the library. Create a button using the tag template literal syntax that we just saw, assign it some style and use it in your JSX code. There you go, your first ever styled component fully functional. 
ready to be used wherever you want in your code base. Now that we have our first styled component, we can dig into a few more details. In addition to the syntax and the core philosophy, there are also differences with respect to how styled components work under the hood. Here is some React code with inline styles applied and the compiled output that it generates. Notice that the styles are converted to the CSS equivalent and then applied as raw styles into the same element. Writing the same code in the form of a styled component and looking at the compiled output, we can see that a separate, unique style tag is created on top of the DOM and a class reference to the style is assigned to the element in consideration. This boosts the performance of a page considerably. With that piece of information with us, let us now look into how styled components lets us achieve some of the more complex use cases that we would face while styling our components on a day-to-day -day basis. In cases where we want to style a component based on the props passed to us, we can use this syntax. We can interpolate a function in the tag template literal like so, and all the props passed to the component will be passed to that function. Based on the props that we are interested in, we can then write conditional styling. Then, passing the prop in the component makes the styling to take effect. We even have the liberty to go back to the class name syntax just in case we wanted to by defining the styles slightly differently in this manner using sass. And then, when we assign the particular class name to the component, we can see the results. Instead of just a single style, if we wanted to change a whole lot of CSS conditionally, even that can be achieved like so. Import CSS from styled components and in the interpolating function, append the CSS conditionally. Once done, that CSS will take effect when we pass those particular props to the component. Until now, we only built on top of standard components, but if required, we can even build on top of our own custom components to build more specifically styled version of the set components. That can be achieved by calling the styled function and passing it the original component. All other styling works the same as the style components we built before. Here, we are building style button a specific version of our button component, which is again a full-fledged React component in itself and we can use it in our code wherever we like. Styled components manage props in a smart manner, which we can see from this example input component that we built here. If we use the component by passing it regular props as an input component takes, style components is smart enough to pass it down to the underlying component. See how the default value actually takes effect. But the moment we pass custom props to the component that we are interpolating on, like color, we see that styles take effect instantly, just as expected. So that covers most of our use cases. Let us now look at a few more points that tilt the case in the favor of styled components. Those include native mobile support through React Native, a support for server-side rendering, Unit testing through snapshots which also takes into account the styles generated for the component. And lastly, you might have observed in the code that we wrote just now that we have SAS support right out of the box. Well, like all frameworks, this one has its fair share of cons too. First things first, the library is just a few years old and hopping onto it, pushing it to your production environment means being eternally dependent on the maintainers to keep supporting it. But isn't that the case with all the libraries that we use? Apart from that, there is a slight learning curve as it supports so many features and use cases. Take some time to get a firm grip and to know all the features. And lastly, it comes down to developer preferences. Some devs might not just like for their components to be so tightly coupled with the styles and would still like to do things the old style way where they feel more comfortable. Anyways, with 28.3k stars on GitHub and around a million weekly downloads, it's definitely something you must check out before taking a call. Do give it a try and see if it fits your styling use case. That's all for today's video. 
Subscribe to the channel for more good stuff. See you in the next one. Until then, happy coding.